In physics and in chemistry, we count large numbers of atoms and molecules using a quantity known as the mole. Now before we get into what a mole actually is and what it is used to count, I'd like to motivate this example with something that people can relate to in their everyday life. Everyone knows that uh, the word dozen, so if I said one dozen, you know that that equals 12, or it means 12. But what does, it act, what does 12 actually mean? So if we're counting, for example, donuts, we can say you have a dozen donuts. And in that case, we label the thing that we're counting or the unit that we're counting. So as an example, let's say I have 24 donuts. Now, if you ever stand behind someone in line ordering donuts, or at least 24 donuts, you don't hear them say, hey, give me 24 donuts. They usually say, can I have two dozen donuts? And what they're really doing is they're converting this number 24 into units of dozens. So for example, 12 donuts equals one dozen donuts. And if you look, I can cancel out this unit a dozen, or excuse me, donuts. And when I do that, I get 24 divided by 12, which is two, two dozen. And if I wanted to label this, I could label it as two dozen donuts. So it's often more simple to use a smaller number when you're counting very, very large things. So as an, one more example, in case you didn't catch this example, let's say we had someone and they were going into the store and they were going to buy 36 donuts. They're not going to walk into the store and say, give me 36 donuts. They're going to walk into the store and say, can I have, say, three dozen donuts? And the conversion that they're doing in their head, although they might not understand it as a conversion, is they're converting 12 donuts into a dozen. And so notice this unit of donuts cancels out with that unit of donuts. And what they should get is 36 divided by 12 is three dozen. And if they wanted to label what they're actually getting, it would be donuts. So it's again easier to use a small number to represent a large quantity. And that's exactly what they people do when they use the word dozen. Now let me make a similar analogy with to you with atoms. If you take, for example, five pounds of iron so if you go to the gym and you pick up one of the little five pound plates and now they're not really made of iron anymore, they're probably some kind of composite uh, material, like so the, the chemical symbol for iron is Fe. If you pick up a five pound uh, weight at the gym, that has about 2.45 times 10 to the 25 atoms of iron in it. And that's a really, really large number. And just to give you an idea of how large that number really is, 2.45 times 10 to the 25th is a 2 with 25 digits to the right of it. So as an example, if I can actually write it out accurately, it would be 2, 4, 5, which is, so now I need to go 25 decimal places in this direction. So I would go 4, 5, which is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 atoms of, in, in this case, iron. I'll label it specifically as atoms of iron. Now, you might say, well, the reason we came up with scientific notation is to write this very large number in a more compact form, and that's partly true. But there's actually an easier way to write this large number of atoms. And that's by using the definition or the counting term, the mole. Now, one mole of atoms equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23. All right. So just like the word a dozen means 12, one mole means 6.022 times 10 to the 23 and depends on how you label it. It could be atoms, it could be moles, it could be donuts. Although there is not uh, one mole of donuts on the earth and maybe in a later problem we can prove that out. So as an example, let's say I'm given this number of iron atoms and I want to figure out how many moles of iron atoms there are in uh, five pounds. I already know that there's this many atoms, but to make the number more simple, let's figure out how many moles of atoms there are in five pounds. So to do that, I know that there are 
2.45 times 10 to the 25th atoms. And what I want to do now is convert this number of atoms over to moles. And I know that there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms in one mole of atoms. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just divide this number by this number. And notice one other thing. This unit of atoms cancels out with this unit of atoms. And when I do that calculation in my cal I get the number 40.65 moles. Now, it's much easier to talk about 40.65 moles than it is to talk about 2.45 times 10 to the 25th atoms. Of, in this case, iron. Now, is that just because we're lazy? It might be, but it also is easier to represent large numbers using a much um, smaller um, quantity. In this case, these two numbers, 2.45 times 10 to the 25th atoms, represents the same number of atoms that 40.65 moles of atoms represents. Now, as one last example, let's just figure out how many dozen atoms there are in this 2.45 atoms of iron. So as this as an example, let's say we have 2.45 times 10 to the 25th atoms. And I want to figure out how many dozens of atoms do I have? Well, I know that there are 12 dozen atoms, or excuse me, 12 atoms, I'm sorry about that. So there are 12 atoms in one dozen of atoms. And when I do this, the number that I get is about 2.04 times 10 to the 24 dozen atoms. And if you notice the difference between this number and this number, there isn't a significant difference. And so why don't we count atoms using the, the uh, quantity one dozen? Because it doesn't simplify the numbers enough to justify its use. We could very well use the word dozen atoms, but um, it's just not a very practical uh, unit to measure things in. And I'll pick up with this idea in the next video.